Hi friends, David here from Above AVL. And one of the things that we help people with like every day, especially inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs is we help people trigger lighting and video and whatever else they need to from backing tracks. And this can be something that really can have a big impact on your show, but you might not be sure where to start. This video is gonna be your answer. <laughs> Okay, so at the end of the day, there are multiple ways that you could potentially trigger video from backing tracks, okay, um, or lighting, okay, but we're going to walk through kind of the basic steps here and what you need to know to get started. So where we're going to start, essentially, is we're going to start with a DAW. So I'm going to just open up Ableton Live here because... Essentially, you've got to start by just triggering, by sending some sort of signal from your DAW, from your backing track program, to your lighting, okay? And so what's that going to look like? Well, in most cases, like 99% of the time, if you're triggering something from backing tracks, it is either going to be MIDI control or it's going to be time code. Time code is going to come more into play in more professional use cases or if you have a very complex show. For most gigging bands, regional artists, things like that, MIDI is going to be your way to go. And so, for example, if I'm here in Ableton Live, in my show, I can create MIDI and then I've just got to send that somewhere. Okay, so where do we send it? Well, there's a couple options, right? First and foremost, like if you're sending to an external lighting device or for example, an external video device, like this is the MVP, no association, no affiliation, just bought it on Kickstarter. I believe it's on the market now, it's a real product and it's a little video server. Takes MIDI input, plays it out. For something like this, you're gonna want a USB MIDI converter. This is my hot mess of uh, two USB MIDI converters chained together so you can go from one device to another. The MVP has a five pin MIDI port on it, so you just need this side. I feel like it might be able to trigger MIDI over USB, or maybe that was something that didn't work when I first tested it, so do your own research there. Um, but regardless, whether you're triggering on another computer or standalone device like this MVP, MIDI is gonna be your way to go. Lighting, on the other hand, is going to be also MIDI, probably, but if you're on the same computer, and I mean the same goes for video, then you can use something like this here where we're using a loop MIDI, okay? Um, so loop MIDI is just a little program that allows you to send MIDI within the same computer, and it has a, a friend program called RTP MIDI, or on Macs, the IAC bus, is able to send that RTP MIDI signal between different devices on the network. But all in all, it's gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be the same essential process to get things started, basically. You are basically gonna take your track, nice and simple, okay? We've assigned MIDI, right? Just for fun, we'll do channel 16 because that's like 15 and 16 are generally reserved for show type applications. And so I'm sending it to loop MIDI to channel 16. I create a clip and I am, I am not great at Ableton. And so I'll just start with the bottom most note, okay? Right? And then maybe um, a couple measures in, I'm gonna do the next note, right? Okay, perfect. So now we've got that clip, we would have audio if it was real backing tracks. Now how do we trigger another device? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and open up here um, my DMX5. And in here, this is just um, probably a demo show I was working with, so I'm just gonna create two scenes here. And then I'm gonna arrange my screen left and right so it's easy to see. And the easiest way to set up these triggers to trigger the lighting scenes, well, first I wanna go to the preferences really quick. Okay, edit settings. Just to double check that loop MIDI is set for MIDI input. Now, if you're doing a MIDI loop or any time of a computer to computer connection, you don't wanna do MIDI in and out usually because that will just make it have a basically a feedback cycle and uh, it'll crash things. So you don't wanna do that. But we're taking MIDI input, we're sending MIDI out, beautiful. So what we then do is go to the MIDI map mode. We click on whatever we wanna trigger. I'm gonna play my MIDI clip really quick and then I stop it. You see there, it, it switches the notes as I go through it because it's in learn mode. 
So I'm gonna stop it after the first note. <laughs> and then I'm going to, looks like it picked up on a CC. So this is where um, it's picking up the control change from MIDI firing. Um, I know I can turn that off, but I am just in this case going to go ahead and set it to C minus two manually. So instead of, so scene, loop MIDI port, channel 16. But I want it to be, instead of a CC, I want it to be a note, uh, which it should let me do. I'm gonna create a note shortcut. It should have picked up on it, but I need to disable the CC in Ableton and I'm just not gonna worry about that now. Um, so channel one, note C minus, it's probably C minus one here because the octaves uh, just don't match up. So that's C minus two, this is C minus one, that happens. Then do this one, any scene device. Channel 16, oh, I gotta set channel 16 on the other one. C sharp minus one. And then if we toggle out of MIDI map mode, we should be able to play this. Yep. And it's triggers scene one, scene two, scene one, scene two. You're off to the races. So it honestly can really be that simple to trigger lighting um, from backing tracks. And, and this is going to work for, you know, any type of program that can work. So this can work for um, backing tracks, playing lighting, it can do backing tracks playing video. You just log into a device like this MVP device, MVP device. Um, even presentation softwares or software like QLab, which can run all sorts of different things. Um, any of this stuff can be triggered the same way. And so just to recap, it, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you essentially just need something that's gonna generate the MIDI. You need a way to send it, whether it's a loop MIDI within the same computer, whether it's a set of USB MIDI adapters between a computer and another device or between two computers or RTP MIDI, which on the Mac is called the IAC bus um, between separate computers. Um, the beautiful thing about this is that MIDI itself and even USB MIDI or, or network based MIDI um, controls, uh, once you set them up, they're very, very reliable. They tend to work every time without fail. We help uh, really hundreds and thousands of people set this stuff up and it works really well. So if you want to dive deeper, we've got courses inside Learn Stage Lighting Labs, but I just wanted to do a quick example today because I think people sometimes think it's really complicated and it absolutely doesn't have to be. It can be really simple to use MIDI to trigger all sorts of great stuff from backing tracks. And that's one of those things that is really gonna elevate your event as a band, maybe as a worship type thing. Uh, not having to have an operator run things, but be able to have a show that's really tied into your music is gonna work really well and gonna allow you to kind of hit that next level. So if you guys enjoyed watching this and you're brand new here, head over to learnstagelighting.com. We've got a free guide we want to get into your hands. We'll also pop a code on the screen or a link or something like that. And of course, subscribe and we'll see you guys in our next video. Appreciate you. Thanks.